Welcome to the next episode of VGXL. I'm your host, Daniel, a.k.a. Games. Joining us today again is Ezra and Marvel from the Idiot Ezra Podcast. And uh, today we're going to be discussing the Game Awards uh, nominations that are that just dropped um, on Twitter and, and on the GameAwards.com. But uh, before that, if you're not already following, definitely follow me at, VG, at VGXL Podcast on Twitter or Video Games X Life everywhere else. And uh, where can we follow you guys at? Well, Daniel, you can follow me on Twitter at Idiot Ezra, and you can also follow us, me and Marvin, our podcast together on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, wherever you find any podcast, Idiot Ezra Podcast. Is that how you always uh, talk? <laughs> oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. That was his terrible radio voice. Um, you can catch me at lgumby 7 on Twitter, or you can curse me out at Idiot Ezra on Twitter. <laughs> He never he never promotes the podcast. Unbelievable, right? Marvin's selfish. You already promoted the podcast. What do you want to promote? Maybe they want to hear from your. Maybe they got me muted, and they can only hear from you. Speaking of your podcast, now I know I fucked up last week. You know, I said, you know what? I was trying to motivate, and I said, you go ahead and record. Didn't mean the next one I wasn't going to be on it. How dare you? What? I'm lost. You, you, here. you recorded again on Saturday. Yeah, we without recorded. me, I was supposed to be on the next episode, but I didn't make it. Oh, my bad. Yeah, What's man. good? We, What's we good? We here pump. We out here pumping it out, baby. You gotta <laughs> be there. If you're not there with the pumping, we going we still gonna do it. Eventually, we pull out, but you know, we still gonna get in there. Ooh, yeah. Because I was driving to work today, and I was like, "Oh, there's a new episode of Idiot Ezra." I was like, "Wait, I thought I listened to," it. and I was like, "Oh, it's a brand new episode. Wow." Talking about Veterans Day and everything, I was like, "Wow." Okay, all right, all right. So you gotta do it. <laughs> I, if you would have done it Saturday, I probably wouldn't have done it anyway. So it's all good. <laughs> this weekend might be rough too because uh, Anime NYC is this weekend, and I'll be a little busy dressing up as maybe. Even though it's not an anime, I might do front man cosplay for an Anime NYC. Oh shit! Yeah, where's that at? Shit man. Shit man. Where? Where's it at? It's in Java Center. Oh, it's, same oh, as, it's uh, just the okay. Same as New York Comic Con. Listen, Daniel, don't believe this man. He's going to dress up as Louise for the seventh year in a row. That's it. Not for anime. Yes. <laughs> Are you going? You just you just want an excuse to wear a skirt, guy. A dress. Let's get it correct. And let me say, you ladies, I wish I had it easy as you guys. Matter of fact. That's the end in thing. This sense, and I'm talking about clothing. I'm talking about the clothing. Like A dress, $14? That's a whole outfit. Like a man can't spend $14 budget on an outfit. It's just not going to work. Why don't you want to wear a dress? Why don't I wear a dress? Yes. Don't you, does, don't, aren't men wearing dresses now? Yeah, that's Yes, you could wear a dress if you want, but I'm, the way my you know inner thighs and thickness of the thighs works, it's not going to be appropriate. It's not going to be work appropriate. I might get hit with a couple um, HR uh, complaints. I'm just saying. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> they say thick guys they say thick lives live li uh, save lives uh, this one might destroy mine so I can't do it I hear that I have the same problem Pfeffer's always bothering me about it <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> she looked at me she's like what the fuck um, so yeah so the game award nominations got, got released today I wasn't even expecting that um, I wasn't even going to record until maybe later this week, but I was like, oh, you know what? I want to cover that uh, for everybody here. Um, so yeah, the the they show they showed for every category, but the one that really caught my attention, obviously, which is the most important. Well, it's not. Well, yeah, it is the most important one. Um, I you know I have a few that I like personally, but uh, but yeah, the the list shows um, Death Loop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts Two, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. Uh, for game of the year. For game of the year, yeah. Uh, so yeah, before I say anything, what, what do you, uh, how do you feel about that uh, list, uh, Ezra? Well, you asked the casual first, and I am the casual. But the first hand look, the first glance at this, I'm like, this might have, like I said, with no knowledge, no research. Personally, I feel like this is one of the softest lineups that I could have nominees I've seen in the last 10 years. This is, I'm not saying it's the worst, but it might be up there. Like this lineup is really bad when you got, you know, how many of these games were 
not that a, a game should be mainstream or should be a big hit to win game of the year. I'm not saying that at all. But it's surprising not to see a big hit, mainstream hit on this list. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. But overall, I don't know if anybody would consider these a classic also. Forget about the sales and being mainstream. I haven't heard anybody on this podcast or Twitter just rave about these games up and down and say this is a classic that everyone should enjoy. I hear that. Yep. What about uh, and before I have some questions, but before that, what's what about you, uh, Mark? What you think about that that setup? I mean, personally, I, I got three issues with it. Uh, one, Deathloop, as as good as it looked before before it launched. Once I saw how stupid the AI was, it just like I can't even put it in the conversation for game of the year. Like the AI just can't be that dumb that it just takes you out of the immersion. So I don't I don't understand, but it's it's been a, a critic's darling for this year for whatever odd reason. Right. Um Resident Evil Village. I mean, I, I hear a lot of people saying Tales of Arise got snubbed. But honestly, with Village, I, I I didn't really remember. People played it, but it was like it wasn't nothing groundbreaking. It wasn't nothing big. It was just like a good Resident Evil. Right. No, I agree. I can agree with that. Go, yeah, go on. And then with uh, Ratchet and Clank, I mean, I enjoyed it, but personally, I would have preferred if if it was like just one PlayStation swap, I would have put Returnal instead of Ratchet and Clank. Okay, um, uh, to follow up, I would ask, what other two games would you switch th the other two that you're complaining about? You know, I, I think if we're going to take out some of these games, which ones would you put in there? Right. Well, that's, yeah, that's what I was getting to that, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, Tales of Arise would have been one since I saw a lot of, like, good things about that. But uh, I don't have a second one at the moment. I would say, see, I was going to go over that, too, because I, I, I agree. Like, I wasn't crazy. Like, just the, none of the, like you said, it's soft. Like, it's not bad. And I want to elaborate that a little bit. Like, it's more like, this is the safest. This is super safe. You know what I mean? It's, it's all, yeah, they're AAA. You know, they got higher, high, highest rated. But none of them, it's like, like, they're, they're, I was looking at this just now. It's like, there are more games out there. Like, one game that I completely forgot that I have that I loved like I loved is Monster Hunter Rise. Rise that should have that could have been on here. It was a great game. It took everything that they that they that they learned from Monster Hunter World and threw it on the and, and it played wonderfully on the Switch for what the Switch could do. Don't get me wrong. I can't wait till it comes out to, for PC so I can see it in 60 FPS or higher. But for what it was on the Switch, it was a it was a very fun game. You know, so I, I would I would replace probably Deathloop or Ra Ratchet and Clank for sure. I really feel like what why the hell is that in there? Wasn't that crazy of a game besides the graphics? Like yeah, it did it did some cool things with the heart with the S SSD and the PS5, which got proven that could it could be done on a slower SSD, not a not a Gen 3, but the slowest Gen you know 4 SSD. It could it, it runs fine, so it wasn't that crazy to need that. And I don't know, I didn't play Psychonauts 2, but I have heard a lot of good things. And, but Deathloop too, like I know it got a lot, uh, got highly praised. But it's like I don't know. I feel like or maybe not Deathloop. I think Resident Evil Village before Deathloop because Resident Evil Village didn't do anything that much crazier than Seven. Seven like really like I feel like could have would be a better nomination if that had come out this year, you know, versus Village in my opinion. Village was cool. I didn't really see that many people besides like the initial like you know critics. I didn't see that many people like gushing over it. And I think and honestly I think uh, even even um. Uh, for to swap out with Ratchet and Clank, uh, uh, what's it called? Could have went in there. Um, uh, what the hell's the fucking name? Uh, Gardens of the Galaxy was was really fun and kind of came out of nowhere and was a surprise, surprisingly good game in my opinion. Like I can see why it's not there because the gamey parts weren't mind blowing. It was kind of simple, I'll admit. You know, it's just a little shooter, but like the story was fucking incredible to me like i love the story like I, that shit is guardians like fuck the movies like that shit is the real you know like if they completely took out the movies and put that as as the main cast i'd be i'd be fine with that at this point you know what i mean but yeah i don't know it, it is a little bit too safe do they have a story of the year 
category or they call it best narrative yeah they have yeah okay so they are nominated for best narrative uh marvel's uh, guardians of the galaxy right okay all right and so that i was were, i was happy to see you were happy to see that okay um i think i don't know if i'm jumping ahead because it's the one year anniversary of the you know of the new generation consoles dropping and I've been feeling like all year, if you, you know, because they're low in stock, right? You can't, you know, I mean, low in production. So it's it's tough to get a PS5 or Xbox Series <clears> 1. <throat> but I'm saying and I'm thinking this past year, you're not missing out if you don't have the new generation consoles. Like nothing has come out. I mean, there's plenty that's come out, but I'm saying nothing has been like you're really missing the experience by not still playing on your old generation consoles. And I'm thinking the games speak to that. And this game of the year speaks to that. Like, it just, if you don't have a PS5 yet, don't worry about it. You're not really missing that much. Okay? It's a great system. I love my PS5. I love the controller of the, you know, the improvements they've made. But if I still have my PS4 or playing on my PS4, I'm not really missing out any games. Like, damn, I need that PS5 to get that game. And I think that this kind of list, you know, speaks to that of my feelings. And that's that's I don't know if you guys feel the same way towards that. I mean, well, did you have any response to that, Marvin? I mean, I had a fantastic time with Returnal myself, but I mean, <laughs> well, you got to realize it's literally the first year you're going to have like. 90% of the games be cross-gen anyways regardless and that's, it's actually probably more because the only games I could really think of off the top of my head that were exclusives to next gen were uh, let's see Returnal Ratchet and Clank The Medium uh shit um D- Demon Souls yeah. Demon Souls and that's I mean I can't think of anything big besides that so yeah those are at least the, the major ones if we're missed if we're miss, if we're off we're off by like one maybe two like there really yeah. wasn't a whole lot of next gen and, and I agree like if you want for exclusivity yeah there really wasn't a reason to get the consoles uh to upgrade from a ps4 I honestly in my opinion if you had a base ps4 it's worth it because the 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 ps4 pro did do a lot and was a significant in my opinion significant enough upgrade and that's because like i have multiple playstations so when i would look at you know how the game was running on the pro versus a standard there's a significant difference so if you've never seen these games run on a pro it would be worth it if you're coming from a pro it's really not that crazy well i'm not saying not to upgrade i'm I'm definitely like listen i love my ps5 I'm not saying not to upgrade. I'm saying is you're not missing that much. Right, right. You're not like you're not standing outside the building. You know what I mean? You're you're in the circle still. You may be in the outer of the circle. You might be a couple steps away from step falling out the ring, but <laughs> you're still in there. You're not missing much by not being in the next gen. And I'm saying these games represent that to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's what is that's what is basically telling me like, all right, if I still have my PS4, I ain't missing much. Or I have my old Xbox. I ain't missing much. Yeah, it's true. I mean, besides performance, like, you just, you didn't miss any games pretty much besides, you know, if you cared about uh, Ratchet & Clank or Demon Souls or something like that. So so you guys don't feel strongly like there was a big snub for Game of the Year also. Now that, like, that we're talking about this lineup is kind of soft, there's no monster snubs here, right? There's no community snub amongst everybody to me it's just returnal honestly it's, but that's but that's a personal opinion obviously right well not not necessarily not nah, because nah, there was a whole bunch of build-up as far as people saying what their game of the year is on mentioning it on twitter right like if you go by twitter and the fanboys uh, on either side, the snub for PlayStation is Returnal for sure. Everyone's like, "Oh, it's you know, like now, now the you know the people who love like the game are coming out the woodwork." And the other big quote unquote snub or whatever is Forza. Oh, Forza. Yeah, on on oh, the I, Xbox I, side. I don't understand why people consider it a snub. <sighs> it's a racing game, and the racing games have never. 
I don't even think I can remember the last racing game that. But I think you can make a complaint. I think you can make a complaint because look at this lineup. You could say, hey, this Resident Evil Village has been done before, too. So you can say you could put Forza over that or things of that nature. I think there's arguments you can make on certain some of these games saying none of these games have pushed the envelope. None of these games has changed the game, you know, and Forza didn't do the same thing. They improved on it like these franchises did. Right. Like, yeah, if you want to use that metric, you could say Forza should be there or or you feel that way. Like, yeah, like historically, it's never been that me personally. I I wouldn't be that mad. I mean, based on what we do have, I wouldn't be that that mad about it because, you know, it, it, I don't know. I feel like like, the, it, well, it's either or because I didn't really play four. So it's hard. So since it's my first, maybe that, uh, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm probably not the best person to speak on it. But because four existed, because they've already done this open world thing, it's been done multiple times. Like, you know, it doesn't it doesn't deserve it. But like you said, Resident Evil Village isn't like that crazy but I'm saying, either. Did, did so. Ratchet and Clank do something brand new? Bes yeah, besides the. I guess the SSD functionality, like jumping new, between new, worlds. New stages, new characters. Okay, oh, new stages. Oh, thank you. No, I mean, new, new, stages, new, uh, new weapons, new characters. Okay, I'm just saying, I, you should expect that on, right. for a brand new game. I'm just saying they haven't, they didn't really change much of Rancher to Clank, Clank I right? Mean, Forza didn't really change much, and from what I've heard, the yeah, that's story my point. is cringy also. So. But that's, my, that's exactly my point. It's the same shit with a different package. They they achieve the same thing, basically. That's all I'm saying here. I don't, you know, that's all the same metric. They improved on some things. There's some things lacking, right? And, and I'm and sure it's, and Ratchet it's across, and Clank did the same thing. Yeah, like I mean, Ratchet and Clank, I feel more would deserve it more than Forza. Like would deserve to be nominated more than Forza simply because it did uh, mechanically do, do did do some new things. Like it did, you know, with. Besides having like ray tracing and next gen graphics and stuff like that, it also, like I said, it had the whole like instant loading into a whole new world and doing the whole teleport thing, which was not possible. Well, but technically, is that, shouldn't is be that possible. a game thing or is that a performance thing? That's, but everything should be taken into account. That's what I'm saying. Like it's part of the play. It's part of the play style. It's not just loading quick. I guess, yeah. It's part of the level design and the game design was the quick loading. That's what I'm saying. That's what makes it stand apart. It's a. It's not the best argument. I'm just saying compared to Forza, they didn't do nothing new at all. That hasn't been done in other games. Yeah. You know, whereas at least the 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 multi world being able to jump into a new dimension and the map to instantly change was something i guess new to gaming and something that like i feel deserves its recognition besides being fun and highly you know and highly rated or whatever it did do something different right so I, you know that's that's what that has going for it um you know i think i think a lot of it on but yeah a lot of it only comes down to fun and narrative and i guess some but it's I, the whole shit is 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 bogus anyway because there there are tons of other games that not tons but there are Highly rated games, more rated games that came out this year. You know, like, you know, Tales of Rise was another one, Death Store, but it feels like indies aren't considered, you know, and I don't know why Monster Hunter wasn't there because that was a big one. And Monster Hunter was, was, was you know, did they did some things there for, especially for the Switch. I think like that was a, a great game. That game should have definitely been, been up there somewhere. But I tell you, I tell you one thing as the casual here, looking at the list i you know youtube's i never heard of it takes two i've never i didn't hear about it really? i didn't see it advertised yeah really for me oh, wow. like it, it really wasn't it really wasn't advertised yeah it's it was true a, a, a co-op uh adventure game yeah i and i, I youtubed it and i love what i saw and now because of the nomination i'm gonna tell shanice like hey would you play this with me because Worth this it. looks like a great interactive you know different story you know they tried to i like the twist they did on it and it made me interested and then they're probably going to get a purchase just from me just from looking at the game so you know it, it did them a uh, a favor i want to say here right so so that was pretty cool yeah it takes two was 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 fun me and me and and Pfeffer played that game and uh um on stream and we had a great great time with that game so that's why i haven't touched that's why i haven't said nothing about it because i'm like that one i think deserves it this guy uh he's he's been at like every game awards i don't know if you saw the one where he was cursed like fuck the oscars or whatever and like well i i, I want to make this point clear i'm not saying none of these games don't deserve to be on the list i'm saying is it's soft because the whole year was soft 
But I feel That's like even I mean. for a soft year, they could have picked better games. That you know, like. But but I think your nit. But that's personal preference or nitpicking. It's not like there's strong, big arguments. Like there's some years you like there's a clear cut robbery or that's bullshit. This I mean there's anger, some towards of some snubs over the years. I don't think there's anger this year. You know, the gaming community is always going to complain about some shit. But you know what I mean. When if it's trending and everybody's pissed off about a certain game, then you know it's something big of a snub. Yeah, but you just got like you're just killing the whole conversation. Well, what, what killing? What, I'm telling the <laughs> truth. Like this, I think the com- my narrative is all these developers step your fucking game up. Yeah, it's but- a soft ass year. <laughs> well, I mean, it's the, it's the post-COVID. Your next year is when everything got pushed uh, back. I don't give a shit year. about the excuses, man. You're on your computer, your remote. Fuck out of here. The shit was soft, plain and simple. You want? Yeah, but my argument is that even in. for a soft year, the games could have still been better that got picked. Like they still picked like the safest fucking games. Like yeah, it was a soft year, and you could have picked better games than that. There was games that that you know they're only going. But you gotta say say the games, say the games. If you're gonna take I, one out, I, you gotta put one in. I just did. I said Monster Hunter. It should definitely yeah, you be said one, there. Yeah. You said I, Monster. I, I said. Okay, I, I'm just saying. Um, now you throw me off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was it was Monster Hunter and um, oh fuck, Tales of Arise. Yeah, I guess Tales of Arise. Yeah, that could have been there too because that was another you know highly. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like for a year that that a lot of shit got pushed back. There wasn't a whole lot. They you know there was they could have replaced us. Even even uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, like I said, that kind of came out of nowhere and was better than a lot of people thought because a lot of people were already dismissed it because of Avengers. Avengers was trash. Blah blah blah. This is also coming from Square. So I think that game deserved a little bit more. If we're getting if we're just playing, you know, talking about the narrative, you know, some of these games barely deserve it. Then Guardians should have should have taken that because just because of how impeccable the writing was, in my opinion, like it was just so good. Like it was, you know, it, like I said, it rivals the movies in a huge way. Like they really fleshed out Drax and 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 even Groot. Like you know, like I got actually attached to the characters it, from playing the game. So I don't know. I think that has merit or whatever. But you're right. The overall year was probably the weakest year in game we've had in a long time, or whatever. Because every all the good shit that was gonna come out this year got pushed back. So. Yeah, I guess that's my argument. Just like, you know, against that, just for all this bullshit that came out this year, the list could have been a little bit better of what that well, got. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not disputing your argument. Right. I'm saying is all of it's soft, so you can. It's interchangeable to me. That's what I'm. That's all I'm saying here. <laughs> you know, you saying this game should be there. Okay. All right. Still sounds soft. <laughs> you know, what I mean, it's just nothing has been a hitter that you're like. Okay, if you had to pick one right now, what would be your game of the year out of this list? That's going to be a debate in itself, right? Mm-hmm. Well, out of that list? Yeah. Uh, hold on, let me put it back up. <laughs> Death Loot. I didn't play. It takes two. I didn't play a Metroid Dread or Psychonauts. Um, but if out of out of the ones that are there, probably it takes two. That would probably be my game of the year because I really think like be, be, like Deathloop was cool. Don't get me wrong, but it didn't feel like anything that crazy. That was like, oh my god, like this is different. This is a game changer. Yeah, the whole loop thing was was cool. I'll give it that or whatever. And I see and I kind of understand why it's there. But I think it takes two as a game was just you know mechanically well done. It's not. It's since since they're going through. It's a whole game with two players and the amount of like teamwork you have to do to really like go between level to level it was it was really 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 well designed like it takes two definitely out of everything that i did play that to me was like the game that really like stuck out for the year to me compared to like ratchet and clank resident Evil village which is very similar to the other one in death loop which is a fast first person shooter rewind mechanic like that one is like did like something different so yeah did it feel like a game of the year thing to you when you were playing it? I didn't see it. I mean, I'll be honest. Yeah, I didn't see it as a game of the year. Like now, no, not at all. Like I wouldn't have thought it was game of the year uh, or would have been considered. But being that it's there, I'm not like, oh, shit, that, you know, what the fuck? You know, like yeah, Ratchet. Yeah. No, more- no, I'm just, I'm just yeah. asking you. I'm just asking how you felt during the time. Like, damn, this game is, you know. This is it right here. This is one of the best games I've played. Yeah, no, I didn't consider that. I would have, like I said, Returnal more, in my opinion, 
than than that but i think i think it deserves to be up there compared to like almost the rest of the list i think it takes two deserves to be there like one me personally i wouldn't have thought it was but seeing it there i think it deserves to be there the okay. rest I, well, I didn't play cyclonus i don't know and metroid dread the, those like <sighs> metroid dread I, I i could you know it's metroid and it's nintendo's you know or whatever people were raving is that the about 2d it. metroid yeah. you were talking about that yeah. was uh 60, 60 bucks <laughs> and you was asking if it's worth it it's game of the year now right so it definitely is worth <laughs> 60 bucks huh <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Marvin? Who, who, like, would you vote on this? Like, or if you have to vote, who are you voting for? And you can vote. I'll probably just go with It Takes Two. Oh, okay. I mean, just, just for the game mechanic, that's about it. Yeah, and like I said, the art, the art was, and the animations were really, really well done. Plus, the level design, I think, was also like it kept you engaged. It felt fun. It wasn't too easy, like like cheap, like you know, where it's just like, all right, you know, it was like it had an, enough challenge to keep it interesting. Which that's what okay. I'm saying. Like, well, well obviously, designed. I only seen, I, I mentioned, I only seen the video. Yeah, you played the game with Jen. Yeah, did it hit its mark? Like, obviously, it takes two. Did it fit the bill to complete the game? Did it really take two? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like most of the okay so so it hit its mark also that's what i'm saying like that game uh you know i think it did like i said i'm, I'm a little sad i didn't play psychonauts so i meant to, i was trying to finish the first one before this before i went to the second one i hear the narrative was really good and it's a fun game but i didn't i didn't get into it at all but yeah i mean it is what it is i mean you didn't really play any of these right you know maybe your mind would be different uh, and I was playing Vanguard too. Okay, take it easy. So it's like you don't know. You know, you, know, you can't really say it was that. I mean, I could say that because I played most of the games. But I, what did, I said at the beginning of the show <laughs> that I'm a casual. I, it's not like I'm hiding this. It's not like I'm no, killing I'm just one game or another. I just said I feel like looking at it, my feeling looks soft. And the way you guys have been, you know, because I listen to video games X Life podcasts. It's <laughs> not like you were raving about these games throughout the year. It's not like Marvin was raving throughout these, for, for these games throughout the year. You know, the gamers are not saying, you know what? You got to play that Deathloop. You know, that's oh, it's one of the best games I've ever played. I haven't heard that from mostly any game throughout the year. Yeah, <laughs> you like, know it was what a well-done you know, game. Yeah. Uh -huh. Deathloop is one of those weird games where all the praise was just coming from critics. Right. And then I, you would just hear all the terrible things with it from people that bought and played the game. Pretty it's much, kind of like yeah. When it happens with like the movies where it's like the critics, critics love it, but the people hate it type of shit. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It was weird. I hear that. I just tell you, like the games that I do play, like you said, Warzone. It's 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 actually nominated for best ongoing I was game. Say yeah. <laughs> that, and I yeah I've put in I don't know how many hours I've put into too many, how many days I've put into Warzone, and I almost vomited by seeing that because you can't even fix your damn you can't even put a damn anti cheat into your fucking hacky ass shit, and you get an ongoing game ongoing bullshit. That continues up and down. This is obviously it's a very solid, great shooter. But if you can't get simple things like that corrected, I don't know. It's just it's almost maybe vomit seeing that, even though I put in so many hours. But that's another category. It made me interested in trying. Um, it was a Genshin Impact. Yeah. I, I can't even see Genshin. the list right now. Yeah, Genshin. Genshin. Did you play that, Daniel? I'm sure. When it came out, yeah. Like I tried a little bit of it. It was all right. I just I don't know. It's a, it's a free to you play. Hit it with the all right. I saw a nine on it for uh, from the critics. So I you know I was reading or saw that it was supposed to be a really good. No, yeah, it made a lot of money for what it was. I hear the microtransactions weren't in your face. I hear I hear good things. It was just I didn't I didn't get too much into it because I didn't want to get sucked in into the loop of that. So, but um, for okay. for best ongoing, I, I I'm just gonna call it right now. I think Final Fantasy is finally gonna take it home. It, it's been on there like every year. It's never takes it. But it's either between Warzone, like you said, fuck Warzone. Apex Legends is nothing crazy. Fortnite, I didn't think did anything that crazy this year. So I think it's either between Genshin or Final Fantasy. And, and after the explosion that happened in over the summer where, like, they literally had to, like, bump up their servers in the UK and stuff like that. Final Fantasy, I think, is finally going to take it this year. But that's just my own Listen, listen, personal, listen, uh, listen. Fortnite has Naruto skins. 
Yeah, I was about to say All that right. right. Marvin Relax. brought him up. He, the you mean you right. I was about to say, he hit you with the killer. <laughs> He hits you with the kill. And that's one thing I say about Fortnite. I never cared for Fortnite at all. I played a tiny bit of it. I'm like, why the hell am I doing work and building here? I'm not a construction worker, but whatever. Um, the way they do their events, I feel like no one's come close to their events yet. No one. Their, their events are sick. And uh, when you drop the Naruto skins, man, I, I, I felt like getting on Fortnite, just buying the skin and just turning off the game. <laughs> You could probably, you know, it sucks because Fortnite is probably the best it's ever been as far as like the things you can play on it. That shit is massive. Like the amount of game modes on there, you could really, that could be the only game you have and you'll have a different experience like, you know, for like a month straight playing that shit because they have, now they have a lot of user created shit. So Fortnite, I don't shit on Fortnite. Like I think Fortnite's uh So I think that'd be your biggest competitor in this category if you go on Final it's Fantasy I Fortune. think it's taken, it, but I don't, I don't think so. Just based on, remember, there's a lot of this is based on critics and stuff like that, that and throughout the year. And I don't know, you didn't hear a lot about Fortnite this year. Even there, they had they had one pretty good event, but that was really it. And but, you, but remember, this is a voting, right? Like, who picks this, the critics or the people? It's, pick it's this? critics. It's not people. They have like a people's choice, and they'll tell you like what the people picked. But the the majority, the most of these games uh, uh, categories are done through critics. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's the only reason why I'm like Final Fantasy was written the most about any year that's ever since it's been on it's been it's never not been a big game like after 2015 if they lose this category are you gonna oh, be... i'll be surprised i'll honestly be surprised I, okay oh, please don't give a fuck <laughs> like i'm like no, really write a nasty, yeah, write a, yeah. write a nasty yeah. email yeah daniel's saying this but he knows damn well he's gonna jump on the next fucking internet wedding and final fantasy 14 stop playing oh you know what <laughs> not just say that Feffer and i gotta do the whole wedding thing on final fantasy there's a whole like you get a real person who from the you guys company. are getting married yeah we, we've been paid for like you pay like 10 bucks in it because you, you actually have to reserve a person to 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 type in it or whatever <laughs> uh like from the from square but uh we never we haven't done it yet because that's a whole thing like you have to give out invitations and you got to tell people to come and it's a whole thing <laughs> well, um, congratulations. Did you ask her to marry you in the game yet? He ain't even proposed yet, dog. Wow, what a bird. <laughs> what a bird. Feff <laughs> rejected his ass. Just now. This is some bullshit. I wow. Know, I know, I know. We, 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 we well, Mike, so we can find her, an I hope, her I, answer. I hope in the next game, I mean, the next one of these days when you guys are running around or when you jump into a game, she's already getting married and you're just there. Just oh shit to somebody else in the game, like at, yeah, hell yeah. <sighs> yeah. She needs to leave your I'll ass. Ca I'll, I'll cancel her fucking subscription. That's it. You don't play. You're no like more. the Final Fantasy baby, okay? <laughs> the baby. The baby. The baby. Oh, He's Final shit. Fantasy 14's the baby right now. Leave his ass. Yeah. He ain't shit. You gonna go on? <laughs> you toxic. Dog. Oh Toggy. shit. Final Fantasy Instagram Live talking about, yeah, I kicked her out. <laughs> no, <laughs> she that needs to my go. Side chick. My side my chick. Final Fantasy 14 side she chick. needs to leave you. Oh, shit. shit. Damn. You hear this, Pfeffer? Oh, man. It's time for you to go. Well, she, you know, she's listening to the re She'll be listening to the recording. Um, <laughs> you know what? First of all, fuck ya. Yeah, all right? I treat her damn good in that damn game. <laughs> I treat a damn good at that game. <laughs> yeah, she be broke. I be giving her money in the game. I'm like, what you need? A million? I got you right now. Boom, trade. So you're Except just a trade. sugar daddy. That's what it sounds like. You know, it sounds like you're a husband. She makes me gear, okay? She's a sugar baby? Yeah. I take her on fucking dungeon runs, okay? I tank for her. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think uh, this is a category I would like to for you guys to speak on. Because I think this is an important and very underrated category. Uh, best community support. Like when you have these devs that just continue to support the community or the community supports each other. Like, do you like this list here with No Man's Sky? Obviously, it's gotten praise over the years for, you know, its community and for stepping its game up. You know, do you like this? I mean, your, your Final Fantasy 14 is up there, too. And I will say that I will always vote for that because I... Uh that's and I have reasons. Category. It seems kind of strong because you got. Uh, I see a big three-way tie with Final Fantasy, Fortnite, and No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky did a fucking fantastic job. I gotta say, and I actually played a lot of No Man's Sky this year. So if that actually won over Final Fantasy, which again has never, I don't think has won this or the best ongoing game over the years, but uh, 
No Man's Sky, I gotta say, has a strong has a strong chance, especially after what they the last couple of updates they did. Man, that game has really changed. But the reason I say Final Fantasy is because the dude always the he always he's been communicating from day before it was common before destiny sh one shit itself with no story in the actual game and they had you know they the they had to reach out to the community to fi help fix the game and all that final fantasy started with that shit you know what i mean and, and when it when they released called it's called a, a a letter from the producer live and he always goes on and he does these these whole events or whatever and then when when covid hit they did their and they for their big community event um they didn't you know how most people do a pre-record and they'll just talk in front of a camera and whatever whatever no they did a full live production on a stage this uh when was this this was back uh earlier at, uh, around the summertime i think i can't remember what month it was but they did a full-on production music mu uh, music bits and all that shit for the community so that's why i'm like they deserve that shit because they didn't just do some half ass shit like they spent the money dude came out in a full set set of armor that's gonna be in the game um when it drops and he, they did this whole music production that was just fucking hilarious like it was really really well done that i'm like no other game company has done that they all do the little bullshit video and that'll be the end of it no they did the a full on stage production and it was only the staff there was no guests it was only just like the on the stage staff and that was it and they had the the street the the twitch chat on the on the back of the or the maybe youtube chat but they had a big projector screen with the chat on there to to kind of like point out some of the things people were saying or whatever but yeah i don't know that's the reason why i think again final fantasy deserves that because they do a lot you know with the community but yeah that's my that's, sorry that's my nerd that's my nerd talk here <laughs> but you're getting married on the on the game so we definitely know you know <laughs> but they do a lot i got i got can't front but no, that or no man's sky i don't know what destiny or apex does maybe apex but I think the Apex took a step forward this year. A lot of people have uh, switched over from like Warzone. Uh, you saw a couple big streamers just say, "You know what? I'm taking a break from Warzone. Go on Apex. Really enjoyed their time. I know like Nick Merckx and Tim the Tatman were enjoying themselves, yeah. and they were rocking out for a while. So they might get a huge push in that direction. Also, that'd be cool. Do you play? Do you do you play Apex at all? Yes, I've played Apex. I, I think it's a very solid game. There's a few things I don't like that's integrated into the game, like uh. I, I don't like luck-based shooters in a sense. Like, I have to... With these BRs, you know how you land and you could pick up a shield, but your shield could be stronger than mine's. Right. You know, I don't like that kind of thing. So they, that annoys me. But obviously, it's a, it's a, to me, it's a much smooth... It's a very smooth shooter. Like, the first day it dropped and I played it, I was really impressed with Apex. So to me, Apex is one of the top-notch you know br games out there i agree i got stuck on that for for a while there yeah i, I used to play religiously and then I, I finally fell off uh what about you do you play any any games like that you care do you care about any of these games more um no <laughs> maybe with the psvr2 when it comes out i'll fuck with the no man's sky but that's about it that in vr i have the, i play it on pc with the quest too and yeah it's, it's pretty interesting it, that shit really when you fly you actually have to like move your arms and shit and that shit is fucking crazy it feels Which like game is that no, uh, no man's sky oh no man's sky okay yeah i was like Whoa. i was i was thinking about because i have a i have a oculus i'm thinking about uh, how i'm hoping the sniper elite vr oh, shit. is on there i want to check that out like this i really want to get more into vr gaming things of that nature because i saw some like trailers for what was it the walking dead saints and sinners right it looked like a great you know in you know interactive in person like you can really get close to these zombies and do some things to them uh, so, uh, have you really tried a uh, half-life alex no i have not i've been doing like i did like beat saver i've done um Wait, don't you need the the thousand uh, dollar no you, you, for you, that do, one? you don't you just need a vr that connects to steam that's it Oh. I played it on my quest. You have the quest, the Oculus Quest. I do. Yes. What are we gonna say, Marv? Uh, but what kind? Of, what's the uh the minimum specs as far as like the GPU and whatnot? So uh, I'm not sure, like, to, cause this is the way I use it. So on the quest, since they has its own built-in shit, you can either buy from there, but you can stream the games wirelessly from your computer to your to your thing. I think you at least need a like maybe something like a 1080 or or above. Maybe maybe a ten uh, 
maybe a 1060 if you have like everything else around it is great but oh yeah because we've we've streamed it from my from my kid's computer and it was fine so and he has a 1060 in there so yeah at least a 10 series or higher uh video card yeah. and then you can you can set it up where you can do virtual desktop and you stream uh uh your your desktop to you to the oculus and you can play all the game it's running on your computer it's just streaming yep. it to the to the headset you do that ezra no, I don't. I think you need to buy a cord for that, I believe. Or no, it's something. wireless. No? Well, you you just use the, the regular USB-C to like connect it the first time and set it all up. But after that, you do it over Wi-Fi. The wireless? And okay. it works really well. It, like There's barely any latency. I do, I, like, we, do that st- we don't even buy games through the Oculus Store. We only play through whatever we have on Steam. So yeah, sweet. Yeah, so I'm gonna look into it. It's really, it's a really great way to like experience, especially Half Life Alex. I highly recommend trying that shit out because that shit you could be walking around and hitting, hitting what almost anything you can like smack around like debris and garbage or whatever. You can, you can just be doing almost whatever you want in that game. There are some you know boundaries and shit, but shooting feels crazy. Like when you're shooting at the monsters and you really got to be like looking around and shit, and it's pretty wild. I'm definitely gonna be checking out this list of uh, nominees of best VR AR games. Yeah. And see if uh, one of these uh, will be attracted and purchased. Yep. And then um oh so they have for best multiplayer they have a uh, uh, Monster Hunter Rise there and Valheim. I have a feeling Valheim's gonna win whatever Valheim whatever category Valheim's in. I have a feeling it's gonna win because it got Ray reviews five million or six million sales. You know, so they're, they're also Van Heim is on best debut indie game. Oh, for so. sure, it's gonna win that. Wait, what? Let me see what else they have there. Hey, so I mean, it's just random thing I came across. Right. For I mean, honestly, I haven't I haven't gone hard in fighting games for a long time, but judging from like just word of mouth that I came across, I, I kind of feel like best fighting game is hella weak this year. I, I think I think Guilty Gear might win it. I bet, I, I saw that trending That's when that I'm dropped. That's why I'm leaning towards it's either Guilty Gear or Nickelodeon. Okay, maybe. I don't. I haven't heard, I haven't heard much about Nickelodeon, so I don't know. I played it. It's okay. It's uh, the biggest, honestly. But it's it's a solid game. But it's just a little bit bare bones. That's why it was on sale like immediately out the door. But there's <laughs> the sound design is just they. I think they missed the mark on not having any of the character voiceovers at all. Oh. Yeah, I think that, that was. Sounds bad. I think they really, really missed the mark on that because that means it just looks like a fan game at this point. Like, you know, like, like what makes a fan game? That's it, it, it's you know, like I mean, <laughs> it's all right. It's not smash. Yeah. It's not like smash. I don't know when you play smash. He's saying it's a uh, Nickelodeon Mugen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my son can make a better uh, game than no, I'm just kidding. Like it's it's a solid game. Just like I said, I think they f- they missed the mark not spending the money on getting getting some of the voice acting or whatever in there. Even if it was a knockoff of of them. Best fighting game. But um <sighs> one one that I I do pay attention to every year is Games for Impact. Um I'm pretty sure, sh- um, you know, these are normally like indie games that have like a really good story or some kind of like heartfelt thing or it talks about mental health. And I, you know, you'll find some gems in here because you- normally they are games that are worth playing. Um, but, uh, you know, so if that's just is just for me. I want to just, you know, if I had to make a prediction, I would say Chicory is probably going to win it. I'm surprised I don't see this other one, this painting one that everybody was playing at some point. But Chicory was got was highly rated. A lot of people love that game, and it, it was it was talked about a lot. That and and maybe Boyfriend Dungeon, because a lot of people, but people were like really angry about Boyfriend Dungeon. So I don't know, because it had it has some. There weren't enough trigger warnings apparently. <laughs> oh, Jesus. yeah, like like one of the. It seems like a like a happy go lucky game, and one of the characters that you start to like in the game eventually turns bad or really really egregious person or a really egregious character and. People got all kinds of upset because it, it you know, it, it triggered them. I'm like, that sounds like it did its job then. It was supposed to be triggering. It was supposed to be, like, make you upset. The one went full Joffrey on the game? Yeah, pretty much. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> Damn, went full Joffrey. That's the only character in, in television history I was only emotionally attached that I wanted to die so bad. Well, that, unless you want to consider IRS from WWE, from WWF back in the day, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know any, any other any other uh, categories that that pique your interest that you want to maybe make a a 
prediction? Statement. Oh, prediction or oh, statement? A statement. Whatever. I, I, I think while I look over this list a little bit more, because obviously I'm the casual. I haven't played a lot of these games. Do you have a particular, besides game of the year, do you have a favorite category under these <clears throat> awards? Um, Honestly, like, I just, yeah, th that's what I just went over. The games for impact is I keep an eye on that. Just because, oh, well, okay. yeah, it's it's also because of Pfeffer. So since since the most of the games she plays are are that, I like to, you know, I usually like to keep track because there'll be some, some, some beautiful games that like you like you like to say like you know some games that you just like to watch so usually uh, i like to we like to pay attention to that to see that and um best performance best performance kind of like i kind of felt like uh even though it's getting more and more famous people slowly but the first year i really watched game uh, game awards is when Senna was sacrifice came out and the voice actress won that and she wasn't an actress she was like just part of the team and they needed somebody they had a low budget they just needed somebody to do her voice and she killed the role and won best best performance out of it and she was like crying on stage and it was just it was just something that i thought was like kind of sweet because she you know when a person in hollywood wins and oh you don't give a fuck they don't give a fuck you know what i mean they probably knew already yeah. that they won but this was like a regular ass person you know so i thought so i like to pay attention to these to to the best performance because a lot of times it's just nobody's you know small time voice acts except for john carlos Pacito. you know uh, I, i'm not sure who the other people are i don't know if ozioma is anybody but yeah i don't know i hope he anything. doesn't win it because it's just him it's him it's freaking furring in a game like i don't know like he's a great actor don't get me wrong i just <laughs> yeah, it just feels freaking a game uh, fucking hating gustavo <laughs> Yo, he, he was great he was great i play i finished far cry 6 i i thought he did a fantastic job just He's an actor already. Give it to, give it to. I don't know. I think, I think uh, Jason Kelly, who did Colt in Deathloop, did a pretty good job. And a lot of people, you know, I thought that's still. And Lady Demetrescu was all right. I didn't really care about her. I'm just looking at best multiplayer game uh, uh, category. I'm seeing Back for Blood and New World. For some reason, those two kind of bother me. But once again, I don't have any names to replace them. It's just, you know, you hear New World and their problems after you hit, you know, reach a certain level and they lost half of their audience within a month. Like, that's a, that's not a good indication for, like, best multiplayer if half the multiplayer's left. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and and Back for Blood is just a, you know, retread of Left for Dead. And you got more, like you we were mentioning in the last podcast, you got more players on Left for Dead than Back for Blood. I don't know. That's just those kind of things bother me. Yeah, I mean, I I played Monster Hunter Rise and it takes two and Valheim. So out of those three, um, I, you know, I, I honestly would like to see either Valheim win or Monster Hunter Rise because it takes two was with. I mean, it did a really great job. I can't front like it really did a great job, but it's like I don't know. I, I guess I have more like like the other two feel more epic to me. I guess I don't know. Maybe maybe because. Uh, I played the shit out of Monster Hunter Rise, and I'm ready to go back when it comes out on PC. So, ooh, I like those games. Well, I think they're, I, they're well, well. You thought it might be the favorite because, like you said, you know, you you felt like it should have been a Game of the Year candidate, and you know, yeah, but it's on this category. So it, that is gonna go. It's going against. It takes two. So that might be the favorite because it because it is under the Game of the Year category. Yep, so that's what I'm saying. Like I have a feeling it, yeah, it's gonna, it might take it just because this guy who does. You never played the other one that he did. Um, the two guys breaking out of jail. That was, it was split screen. Uh, was it a way out? A way out. Yeah. yeah. Way out. You never played oh, that. Also, they did the same. They did the, the same developer did that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he did. I heard that was a great game too. Yeah, it was fun. Fefer and I did that one too. Yeah, he he. That's that's his that's his thing. His thing is he, from the first game he came out with the Tale of Two Brothers or whatever the hell it was called. Um, it was the same thing. Two play. That one was one screen though, and and you had it was two players. These these other two have been split screen. I want to give a shot. I mean, we're gonna talk. Some of these games that deserve some recognition. I want to talk about the two G two D game that I would play. It was a Viking game, but I got to remember the the name of the game. It's I, I think it was Viking Song or Iron Song. You saw me stream it too, and you were saying it's a beautiful yeah. indie two D game that I played on Steam. Um, see, I played something outside of Warzone, and I just got to find the name of it. I I just want to give it some love on the podcast. So while you guys. <laughs> 
maybe communicate about the next one. I'm gonna find out what's the name of that Viking game. <laughs> well, I, I have a question, and um, you know, maybe Marv can answer first. Then, um, so best score in music, right? So you have, you know, the games there are like Artful Escape, Cyberpunk, Deathloop, Mar- Guardians of the Galaxy, and New Replicant. Now, my uh, now Guardians of the Galaxy. Do you feel like it's fair for a game to be considered for best score if it has licensed music? Like, I don't know. Of course. If, yeah, because in, in my opinion, I feel like these other games have original music, like specifically written. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I feel like it's a, you know, you have like. Yeah, but the whole thing is like everything's got to be used correctly. Like if it doesn't set the mood right, it's just terrible anyways, regardless how good the song is. Oh, that's true. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, yeah but that's a I'm not, but. Um, it's kind of like just what me and Ez were talking about uh, the last podcast with uh, the music in The Harder They Fall. Like, yes, they, they didn't use traditional movie oh, classical music. They used, you know, they used Jamaican music. They used, you know, hip hop to incorporate their soundtrack. And we said it was well done. And, you know, it still fit the emotional, it still fit the scene, it still fit the movie. And they use the movie, I mean, the music correctly. So I understand Marvin's point here. Ah, I see. No, no, it's true. I didn't think of it like that. Like, yeah, I guess the, I guess a, a sound direction, you know, unless they have one for that. Um, but uh, I think what you're, I think you're, what you're saying is like, if they have the, because I think anybody could get licensed music. It's just, do you have the budget to play for that licensed music? And Disney obviously has an enormous budget when it comes to their or even square you know, yeah because square also yeah so absolutely but i'm saying i don't think budgets should really how can i say having a big budget should not be used against you also that's true but i but i understand your <clears throat> argument i understand your argument to an extent but you can't discount you know like you said if like marvin said if you can't use it right you know it's true because you got you could, you could totally have licensed music and it could just be a trash, you know, direction that they used it. No, no, that's that's absolutely true. And I think I think they did. It'll be like a terrible moment. It's not, yeah, like, it's not the music for this right. But now. I I think the advantage it does give to using licensed music, you have an emotional attachment to already to that licensed music because it's probably big popular music that you've sang a thousand times. So if you playing the game and you hear that music you're going to feel that emotional attachment to it so they might have an advantage when it comes to the to the voting because the voters are going to be like yeah i love that soundtrack because i love that album i love that song i love that band yeah and they're just going to get that emotional push and but i think that works both ways now you have that emotional push for the player also because we all love music we all you know have our favorites so if you used it to your advantage that guess you get points for that too all right all right so i i do have one question for y'all like what would y'all think if well, actually no technically it would have fallen under for this year but if let's say let's pretend that the gta trilogy fucking would have came in under best score slash music where it's not like a set scene; it's just a whole bunch of songs. Yeah, like just from That's the radios, really cool. right? Like, nah, yeah. yeah, that, yeah. For for me personally, I, I would be that. I would be like, that's not fair because it's not being used; it's just thrown in there. Anybody could throw in music, you know what I mean? Like, like it, <sighs> like it could it, be it, there, I guess, if it wants. But I don't think I don't. I wouldn't vote. I would hope that that wouldn't get voted on over the way this, like, let's say, Vice City versus. Grand Theft, uh, 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 Guardians of the Galaxy both have 80s music. I, th- you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, uh, Gra- uh, Guardians would should win it over that because of the way. Do it you was pick yours. your playlist in Guardians of the Galaxy? Do you create your own playlist? No, no right? No. Okay, just I was just wondering if that's a feature no. within the game. But um, yeah, I hear what you're saying. It's just you're basically just a radio station. <laughs> if you're talking about GTA, right? Right. GTA, Pretty the much. trilogy. Yeah, so and I don't know that. Yeah, well, I was gonna say that 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 uh, in Guardians, since you know they, they do pick, they do like you know take a lot of from the movie. So, you know, you have what's called the huddle. That's like your super move. You know, when you're getting attacked or whatever, and if you're about mm-hmm. to die, you can use that. And he huddles everybody together, gives them a little pep talk, and then a classic song comes on, 
and you know it adds to it a lot it's like because then it's like you said then you have that emotional attachment to the song it's like a hype song you know it's a one of your typical 80s hype songs or whatever and or not even a hype song it'll just be like tainted love or some shit like if playing. you're bumping if you're bumping into it and you're feeling it the game is giving you that experience exactly. right now so you definitely they definitely deserve the credit because it's making you feel that way now they cheated because the movie did it you know i i guess you can i think that's the argument can be like well the movie used that soundtrack you're, it's not like you originally came up with yourselves, but you, I guess you still used it in the right moments within the game. Right, and but, the, and the way they designed the thought thought to come up with the way it comes on, because it you know it could just play some you know sometimes when you're working on the ship it's just playing in the loudspeaker, but the way they used it during combat I think was that's like the highlight. Well, they did it in the movie too, but they like I said they stole that from the movie. Oh, that's I guess you're right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because he he puts on yeah that's right. He puts on the headset. While, they yeah. stole that from the movie, so. I, you know that's the only thing that would bother me like okay you saw the blueprint right 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 right, right. and you incorporated to the game that i think that's would maybe lose a point or two from me in that sense but overall i don't think it's gonna you know still probably gonna win <laughs> i have a feeling just because of that bias and it should win probably should win too what what, what was it um what's what else is on there yeah yeah i don't I don't. I don't feel like Deathloop. But I don't remember. You know, I, I don't really remember the music from it, so it didn't really stick. I knew Replica didn't play Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk maybe was pretty good. It was all right. I mean, I, again, I, nothing really stuck out, so it's kind of hard to say. I have a feeling it might it might just take it, just because of how they how they used it in a game. Um, can someone explain to me what the differences between game, best game, direction? Best art direction. <laughs> well, one's for the actual game, and the other one's just the art. Wait, I just said best game direction. Yes, and best uh, art direction it, because it says because best because if you read their thing, it says awarded for outstanding creative vision, innovation, and game direction and design. Art direction is for outstanding creative or technical achievement. And artistic design and animation. Yeah, art is just the looks. Oh, yeah. I know, I know it's just the look. It could just be the game design, the game loop, etc. Okay. Right, right, like the actual Thank level you. design between them. Yeah, the other one's just how it, how pretty it is. I don't know. To me, that goes hand in hand in some ways, but I don't know. Really? Because one is just all visual. The other one could be... Like also the way that you set up. Oh, you talking about the way? Oh, the oh, direction. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Or the, how the map design could be. Yeah. Okay, I understand what you're saying now. All right. But it could be like the colors used for you know in the game or like Kenna. Ken, Kenna, I hope gets. Uh, well, it's gonna be between Psycho Nuts, I think. But Kenna was pretty as fuck. Like I thought that was a really. Right. Cool. Well, you got. Oh, you got. Whoa, well, you're about to get married. Relax. You're about to get married in Final Fantasy 14. Watch your mouth. She's like. I'm gonna tell Pfeffer. You told him about Kenna is pretty as fuck. What's your problem here? Still kind of young. I, think. I was gonna say like she's like 12 years old. Like I'm good. <laughs> uh, well, you the one that said I'm helping but the, you. Know, the video <laughs> game Kenna Bridge of Spirits was it was a very artistically I think was it looked like like it, I kept calling it fake Moana because it really felt like that. Like the game was gorgeous. Hey, uh, have you gotten to the the difficulty? Oh, I, I I beat it. Yeah, I beat the game. And. Yeah. Uh, I thought I thought you the way you said it. I don't know. I thought it was gonna be more difficult than that. Well, all right. You know what it is. I started on difficult mode. Oh, so you, oh! Like, I, yeah, that I played that on normal. Yeah, yeah, I played that shit on normal. I didn't play that shit on. <laughs> it was like three hits, three four hits. You're dead, bro. I instantly. could, yo. I don't know how. Yeah, yeah. Then no, I see what you're saying. Then, cause yo, the final boss was fucking like the last two bosses. You really have to like. Parry, like, what, like what you're doing. Yeah, you gotta parry. Like, there's no way. It, it was fun though. I had a fucking great time. It was, I don't know. It was nice, short. It just like you know, for the forty bucks, it felt worth. Like, like I got every dollar worth out of that game. Like, it didn't feel lacking at all. I don't know if this didn't make the cut. I mean, like actual date, cut the deadline. And I don't think you spoke about this on the podcast. We were talking about it off camera. Best multiplayer, 
I don't see Halo up there. So I'm thinking it passed the deadline. No, it didn't. And didn't make the deadline. Yeah, and, it's, and it's the a, game didn't come out. It's and the it's beta. on beta. Yeah, and it's a beta. It doesn't come out till the fifteenth, technically. Technically, but now what I want to say is, but I'm just using this moment to talk to Daniel because he played the beta, and I don't think he spoke about it on no, the podcast. Yeah, because it was so, it was yesterday the beta came out. So, uh, so your initial thoughts, your your twenty four hour thoughts. So far, it was. I haven't played Halo since probably like Reach or whatever the last um, Bungie Halo was. No, no, I played four, but I didn't play multiplayer four. So let's say the last multi time I played multiplayer was fucking ODST or Reach or whatever the fuck the last one Bungie made. And um, so going to that after playing like being stuck in Call of Duty a lot, whatever, it was a little bit of a. I had to get used to it, but I gotta say it's. It is tight as fuck. Like, the game is smooth. It, all the controls do what they're supposed to do. Um, graphically, I mean, it's good enough. It, it's, it's not mind-blowing on graphics at all. It, it, it's sharp. It's clean. You know, I'll give it that. But it really just feels like a like a very clean Xbox, you know, la- a, la- a very clean last-gen game or whatever. Um, but uh, overall, pretty fun. Like, like it, it's Halo. I don't know. If you like Halo, you'll like it. If you don't, you know, like my, I guess if anything, it's just the movement's a little bit weird. Like it, it just, it, I feel like if it would have played like Destiny, it, more people would be on it. It's a little bit of, it's a little bit of a shame that it, it just plays like old school Halo. But I gotta say, it's a breath of fresh air compared to like what's already out there. You know what I mean? Because it's old school. Like it, I've been having a, I had a blast. I've been having a blast with the boys on that shit. So. So being the resident hater, uh, <laughs> I want to I, I want to bring up what what I've seen as the the negatives. Right. And then you can speak on that. Okay. Uh, one being the progression system is ass, even with the if you pay the ten dollars for the battle pass. Right. Also, another one is the lack. Well, I mean it's a beta, but it's. A lack of maps, even in the beta. Yeah, that's what has me. Know concerned. that this is pretty much like the final version. That's why I'm like, is it? Like, I, I really like. I'm a little bit concerned about that myself. So, uh, your first point with the with the uh, progression, it is pretty slow. Like, I gotta say, like I played, I did, a, I played, a, you know, a few rounds early uh, in the day yesterday, and then and then I I just streamed for like three hours, and in those three hours, I did not level up. Like, you know, I unlocked the battle pass before I went live. And you really have to like focus down those those uh, challenges. They do keep coming back, which is great. Like one of the easiest challenges is is just playing. So every two levels you're getting, every two games, even if you don't try, you're getting experience points. But it is very very slow. It's not, you know, that's not a mistake. And I I think their 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 defense on that is that the battle pass never expires ever. So you can always do the newer battle pass or you can do the older you know the older stay with the old one so i mean you know so i um and switch between them apparently when when the next season comes out but season two is apparently not coming out till may anyway so it's probably why that's really slow but um well what 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 does this progression in halo give you is it new weapons attachments new skins, uh, new skin, armor. Skin, yeah skins and stuff just like any other game so okay. you can change your look. You'll get stickers. You know, you'll you can get skins for the vehicles in the game. You know, skins for the guns. You know, you, I'm you're... guessing that's a big deal. I mean, that, for me, don't I give no shits about those type of things unless it's helping me. You know, put attachments to my gun and that nature. Um, but when it comes to skins and armor about changing the color or whatever, I know that's a big deal. So I'm not gonna dispute that at all because I know the community. A multiplayer's love that. Right. I don't care. So to me personally, that it's not a negative. Like, oh, his progression is slow. Well, it should be slow for everybody then, right? So we're. <laughs> it's it's right. fair. Like, it, but but I'm saying if you can't change your color or your characters and that affects people, that's something they do need to change. But see, my problem is, it, would it be a negative? What I think they're doing though is, is bullshit. Uh, um, it is on purpose, and they they sell boosts to increase your experience points. So it's like they like they sell. It's not like like in Call of Duty. I, I don't. Like, I know you get them from the battle pass. Can you? I don't know if you can actually buy XP boosts since they're so easily gotten through like battle pass and other achievements. But like, 
I'm assuming you you do get them, to, but you can also pay money for those for those boosts. So I'm like, you know, when when you're doing for a monetary gain, like that's a little bit of a bullshit move. Like I I have to, you know, critique them on that part at least. Like if it was like that, you just earned the boost, like in Call of Duty, fine, whatever. That's the progression, that, you know. But you're char yeah. you're, you're purposely making this toast so you can charge for those boosts, which is bullshit. Like that part okay. is dumb to me. So, you know, that I guess they give it that. But again. I, I'm with you on it. Like it's, it doesn't really affect the gameplay, so that part doesn't matter. As a game, it's fun. It's it, it's just you gotta get. If you're not used to Halo, it's like you gotta get readjusted to to Halo. And you can't. You can, uh, well, last my last thought just is that you. The, as far as like like the maps and stuff, yeah, you can't pick anything yet. I'm like I'm hoping that's just for the beta. But if this is how the game launches, like officially and like yeah, it's gonna it sucks to me like i'm like i'm glad it's free but it's like it's definitely gonna feels lacking if this is the final product here because they're calling it a beta so i'm like you know i hope this is just a simplified version of what you know and they're gonna have more options like there's no other game mode you you're forced into a quick play mode you can't pick what's in the quick play you, you're just at the mercy of the of whatever it picks for you so it'll be oddball capture the flag or slayer and that's it but can we give them some 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 love here in the sense that they gave the community a surprise drop like that's a big thing they just say here boom month early unannounced let's give you this drop yeah hell give you yeah. a little taste for for being uh, yeah to, for being like for three weeks early hell yeah it's just like i said the gra graphically and, and mechanically it's 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 there it's all it's like i said it's nothing mind-blowing as far as graphics but there's no there's no I haven't seen any issues, no bugs, no none of that. That shit, it plays beautifully. Like, it plays beautifully. It's just, you know, that's it. It's Halo. If you've played Halo, you've played this. So, it that, like I said, if they, it, like, just the game by itself, without any other, like, thing about, like, other Halos or other games out there, it's it's a solid game. And I think I think they did a fantastic job with that extra year that they had. Because I'm like, what the fuck were you going to release a year ago then? If this is the, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a little bit confused. But it is super polished. I got to say, no server issues either at all. No connection issues. My boy had a little bit of a problem, but he, he did a couple of reboots and he was fine. But other than that, no server issues at all. And you know people are playing this shit right now. So, and I played like as well, soon as I could yesterday. And listen, Vanguard is a finished product that came out. What two almost two weeks ago? You talking about server issues? Me and Marvin and games getting kicked out. Get yeah, like it's a pain in the fucking ass to squat up and play consistent games. If one person leaves, or I mean not leaves, they get kicked out, or you gotta get an error. It takes another ten fucking minutes to squat up and actually find a game. So that thing is frustrating. I've been dealing with that for the last two weeks, and it makes you want to get off the game. Yeah, it really is bad. So, Trust. I want to say good job on Halo for not fucking that up. Yeah, and big time. fuck you, Activision and Call of Duty. Step your you are a multi. This is your most valuable franchise. Is it? Am I wrong here? Am I wrong here? The most valuable franchise. Hell yeah! Like and they can't get this fucking shit right. You got sixteen developers working on yearly Call of Duties, and you can't get this right. Yeah, that's fucking weird as shit, bro. I don't you know. You can't get anti cheats in Warzone takes you 16 years and you can't fix your damn servers and i heard it was, it was trending to the they had to walk out their employees at activision to get rid of the ceo i'm on board he's a piece of shit up and down when it comes to games his employees everything get him the fuck out of town yeah i'm, I'm ready for that to get him the fuck out and i'll never do another microtransaction while he's ceo i said it here fuck you motherfuckers how many microtransactions have you done? <laughs> I've done? I've done zero, and I'm gonna continue. <laughs> oh shit! At least you know it's true. You, at least my threat is real because I'll never purchase that motherfucker while he's CEO, and I never did. Right. <laughs> the you next, right? you know what? I'll make this announcement. The next CEO, once they, if you get rid of him, I'm gonna buy a mi microtransaction. I'm buying me a skin. First one ever. One skin. Yeah, just one. I'm broker and I got no job, so he's gonna have to wait. Yeah, you know, maybe I'll get another one. Oh shit. Um. <laughs> Sorry to throw you off, Dan. No, no, we're, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, is there anything, any other categories you guys care about? Action adventure or action game? Uh, Best esports athlete. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, look. Best action game, Returnal's there. So, Returnal hopefully will bring something in. I think Returnal's on a couple categories. Yeah. It's, I got, like, three nominations. Yeah. I think it, I think it's going to bring some stuff home. Returnal, I got to say, like, like it, it, it didn't get its fair shot. And that, that's disappointing. I think the pricing really, really fucked it. I think if it would have been priced at... Like Man, pricing should have nothing to do with it. I mean, you're right, is, but the it was it was too difficult for some, especially with the fact that you had to you had to invest time to play it. You could have just be like, oh shit, I got I got 30 minutes to burn. Let me let me play some Eternal. No, you literally had to sit down and be like, yo, I have a dedicated one to three hour block for this, and use that. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree with you. Like, that part sucked, but a lot of people, like, you know, in the reading the threads, it was like it all came down to, like, oh, like, I'm paying. Oh, and then it had, what, a couple of bugs people were complaining about? You didn't have no issues with that game, right? Like, I had no issues. That's what I'm saying. Like, people apparently, like, people were like, oh, it was, a, it was a fucking mess on day one. I'm like, no, it wasn't. That game was solid as fuck for me. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what, what the hell people were, were experiencing, but that game was solid, and... Like I said, I think it was a mix of 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 that. Just people talk so much shit about it, you know, that it was like people weren't gonna take the risk at that point. I don't know. I feel like if it would have been a little cheaper. Would have done more people would have got their hands on it. But I think if it would have had like a a god mode like Hades, oh, I just, yeah, a, just a difficulty switch kind of thing, it probably would do better. Yeah, well, the, if they would have put it that 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 sleep save or whatever sooner like they just came it just came out. i'm like yeah I'm like nine months late like why are you <laughs> like is anyone even still playing this shit but whatever and like like i said i think that game was it's should should have had a better chance simply because it, it was there's not really that many hardcore roguelikes in in that form like in the 3d form like that you know what i mean like i think i'm pretty sure it's the first one right that's what i'm saying like for yeah. just for that alone like i think it should have had a bigger a better chance at game of the year or been in more categories because it was a solid game that game is very fun and i'm like every anybody who shot it did not play that game or just are trash you know what i mean they're just bad at the game so they shit on it that's it but that's it. yep and best content creator of the year <sighs> hopefully it's gonna go to me i wish i could vote i wish you could put in a name <laughs> <laughs> I would put myself every fucking year. Vote for yourself. Hell yeah. Best. I saw. It. I, I like they incorporated like best esports athlete, best esports team. Oh, oh! Oh! Oh my God, woman! I told you the camera was on. What a thoughty thought thought thought. I. Hey, <laughs> <I>, mommy. <laughs> but I think that's YouTube safe though. That's YouTube safe. <laughs> Is it Ezra safe? <laughs> I'll, I'll blur it out. Don't worry. <laughs> blur it out. I'm a, uh, you go, but you go, don't add a strap on. Don't, don't let the <laughs> secret out. <laughs> for, 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 the, uh, for the audio listenership, um, Shanice Booty was all over the camera. <laughs> <laughs> if you want us that and more, check out the YouTube channel. No, nah, I'm just kidding. It's not That's gonna right. Be check out the YouTube channel. You see the blurred <laughs> version of it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to blur too. I had to do that because I. Yeah, you had to do that a few times, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish. I, you, I think you might want to end the show on now. I think it was. <laughs> I, I wish it was that interesting. It was like I had my whole Discord conversation with like Feffer or something like on the stream, uh, like on the on the thing, and like in the first few episodes, I had to blur out like a good ten minutes. You got to blur, and you got to change your voice, huh? <laughs> You get that deep, <laughs> that ransom voice. Then you put that ransom voice. I've stole, I've taken your child. <laughs> uh, I will find you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's it for me. I don't really care about any. I think we went over all the most interesting ones uh, for me. Unless you guys have any last things to cover. Uh, the last thing I want to say that's very important, and I think we all should celebrate, Kanye and Drake have put their differences aside and posted a picture on Twitter. There yeah. you go, baby. That means something. There you go. Yeah. Oh, you heard Marvin's Marvin's mind just exploded right now. Uh, yeah. um, and if you want to know more about it, check it, check it out on Idiot Ezra Podcast and follow me at Idiot Ezra Twitter so I can tell you I don't give a fuck. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah, I covered that. I didn't. I only heard a no, little no, bit. No, no, we didn't cover that at all. We don't, okay. I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. 
Yeah, so I mean, all right. So final prediction for game of the year. What do you What do you got, Ezra? <laughs> Since I played none of them, um, I'm gonna go with. Man, I'm gonna go with Takes Two because that's the game that I was most interested in. I did YouTube all, uh, most of them, and uh, that's the one that I look forward to playing. So I'm the casual here. Take my not even with a grain of salt. I don't, don't even give me. <laughs> <laughs> the salt because I don't deserve a vote here at all. <laughs> what do you got, Marv? I mean, the critics been sucking it off all year, so or since its release at least, so probably Deathloop. Yeah, like I want it takes two to win, but I think out of everything here, probably Deathloop. Yeah, I gotta say, I think that's what's gonna take it. You know, I you mean, have... aren't they aren't they in the uh, the Microsoft theater to present this? Are they? Oh shit! I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, that's hilarious, and I think yeah, I could see that. This and this could be, it actually be interesting for them to win because it's a Microsoft game now and uh, owned studio, and uh, this will be like Microsoft's first, I guess technically. <laughs> shit, because it's it's not on Xbox, but anyway, it's their first, uh, I guess, uh, game to win really in a while. I don't know, I don't know any other first party games that have won from Microsoft for game of the year, so. So you, you don't, so in your knowledge, Xbox has never won game of the year. Not in the last, since I started watching it. And not, yeah, probably not in the last, last 10 years. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't think so. Well, they just celebrate their 20 year anniversary. The, or this coming up, right? Isn't it coming up or did they just celebrate their 20 year anniversary? No, yeah, that was uh, yesterday. It happened already. Yeah, it was yesterday. Uh, That's why they released Halo so, yesterday. I, I think I want to ask that question. How do you feel? Well, not the pony. I mean, not, you know. As they say, the pony, Marvin the hater here. Let's not ask him. But, Daniel, what do you feel overall 20 years of Xbox? As, as far as what, like, as, how they're doing or? No, no, just period. Like, how do you, like, oh, that... you're a gamer. You're, you're, your whole life has been gaming, right? You love gaming. You know, it's been part of our lives forever. Like, are you happy, like, Xbox exists in the sense that, that it's here, that it's been here for 20 years, that Microsoft's in the game, that you wanted to see it continue for another 20 years. Yeah, I mean, you know, like like we always say, like, I mean, I'm happy for them. It's, you know, it's cool to have to still have them around. I never had a problem with Microsoft products or whatever. Besides their console, you know, like the Xbox One, I fucking hate with a passion. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I wish they did more. Um, but, yeah, I'm happy to see them here. It's cool. Like I, like I said, I bought, I bought my, my, I had a lot of fun times back in the day on the original Xbox. I had that shit modded and everything um and then uh uh and then 360 was was like their that was their big time their 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 golden age <laughs> the golden age of xbox was their 360 and i had a lot of fun on that shit you know back back in the day so it's cool to still see them around i'm happy to see that they're shaking things up with game Pass. i'm happy to see that they making some moves buying studios so yeah i'm happy you know like I, i'm i'm looking forward to the next 20 years so them being some kind of competition in the in the gaming scene i think this is one of the most out of their 20 years, this is their one of their most, I guess, say, aggressive towards the gaming community. Obviously, they've invested a lot of money and they've been in the game for 20 years. But I think right now, I think they're trying to really, like you say, be in the f f forefront of the gaming and trying to push the envelope and trying to bring different things to the strategy and not trying to keep up with PlayStation, in a sense, right. but trying to come up with their own you know strategy towards this community so i you know overall you know i'm like i have an up and down relationship with xbox i i i feel like their exclusives throughout their history has left to be desired you right. know they've tried they failed a lot of times and they're still not up to that standard yet but i like the strategy they're taking and i'm happy anytime there's competition to push the envelope on the playstations the nintendos of the world i wish sega was still here in the game too but xbox took that mantle and that's the ones that has to you know be that innovator hopefully one of these guys have to be that innovator and change the game up for future gaming but i think cloud gaming is trying to do that i think other companies are trying to do that but xbox you know, thank you for being here for the last 20 years. And I hope it's around for the next 20 years. Yep. Marvin, no love for Xbox? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, want me to say something? 
Oh, yeah, go ahead. Come on. I mean, I, I just want to say most of its life is ass, but I do appreciate its uh, contributions into the gaming space, <laughs> such as uh, Xbox Live being uh, all high speed, and I know a uh, 28k dollop fucking modem bullshit. Like, oh. I think the Dreamcast had that. Yeah, I'm I was gonna say what, what, what? Maybe one person got. What do you? What would you pick as his highlights, Marvin? For Xbox twenty years, Can, if you have to pick a highlight, what highlight would you pick? And would it be the Xbox Live, like you just said? Uh, I it's mean, contribution as far as to contribu- gaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably Xbox Live. Although, like, I mean, it, it's my theory, obviously, but I believe Xbox Live and the rise of the online multiplayer is what made so many fucking weirdos that we have in the video game space. Now, I think that's just a human race. I think social media just nah, expo- <laughs> help listen, expose that. <laughs> listen, man, listen. Before we went to online multiplayer, motherfuckers had their consoles. If you and your boy had the same console, great. If y'all didn't, y'all would just y'all be like, yo, let me borrow your shit for the weekend. Y'all play each other's games, whatever, whatever. With Xbox Live, it was like, nah, son. We both got to get the same shit so we can hop online and play together. And then all of a sudden, it just became this ridiculous level of fucking tribalism. And it's just blown up from there. Aren't you part of the tribalism? (laughs) No, because I buy. I have fucking uh, Sunset Overdrive on my PC. I have both Ori games on my PC. I'm not going to be like, oh, well, Microsoft Microsoft owns those. Uh, I'm not going to play it. No, I, I play it because I'm in, I buy it because I'm interested in it. But you got these fucking other weirdos where it's just like, oh, uh, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. So fuck Sony and all this other fucking weird shit. And it's just like, what the fuck is going on here? Oh, my God. Don't think that had anything to do with Xbox. Whoever came out with online first would have been that. Would have... Fam, the amount of just like anti Asian racism is extreme on the Xbox side. Huh. I'm talking about it'll be like a four to one of you finding it, of you hearing it and finding out it's an Xbox person compared to a PlayStation person. And it's because Sony is a Japanese company. That's crazy. I can, sadly, I can, especially in today's climate, you know, sadly, I can see that happening. Right. Like, I'm know, not like. That dialogue <laughs> happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm not surprised. I'm just like, <clears throat> yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Because of like the tox. Like, I remember old school, like modern warfare, where you used to be in the lobby with your opponent for multiple games. Like, the amount of toxic shit that used to be spoken in those lobbies is reasons why you don't play in the same lobbies continuously against teams because how crazy you used to get in those lobbies. It's, and I, it's crazy how gaming has to separate people from each other in some ways when it's supposed to be coming together. You know, it's, it's funny you say that because w- when I'm playing alone, <laughs> uh, you know, I have, I'll just do um, push the talk and I'll just... There'll be a couple of guys talking. All I'll say is, shut up. And yo, that's it. Shut up. And they go fucking ham. It goes, cra- it goes crazy. You just, everything just shuts down. Yo, Every- like, I'd be scared. Like, I'd be like, I'm going to fucking kill you. I'm going to cut your mom's throat and fuck her throat. I'm just like, yo, calm. Like, you know, like, all I said was shut up. Honestly, honestly, just because of the lobbies, <laughs> honestly, they should just mute everything if you just want to get rid of toxic stuff. Like, this, there should be no communication unless it's your teammate. But that's no. In fun. some ways, I feel like how lobbies get. You should make it like twenty five and over. No, like no kids should be absolutely even close to this toxic stuff. And I must disclose, I do participate and curse someone out if I have okay, to I, in the I, lobby. I, wanted, I, I was waiting for you to say that because I was just I go, like, wow. I go ham. Y'all motherfuckers took me back to Xbox Live 2009 with the bullshit from the other day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The other day with the lobby. Yeah, because yeah. people... Because there's... I'll say one thing. Like you, like Daniel says, one thing is said and then it just goes crazy. Yeah. So, yes. I, then I participate with that. 
and thing. But I don't take it off the game or I hold any emotional attachment to that. I know it's just that's the toxic relationship inside the Call of Duty community and all that stuff like that. <laughs> and I know, and I realize you got to be like twenty five and over to to, to hand, You probably have to go through a psychological evaluation to get into those lobbies. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, no, it's it's wild out there. That's why I told I told my son, I'm like, just be careful when, even like, you can, you know, just make sure you just chill in a party with your boys. Or if, like, he wants to play uh, uh, GTA Online so bad, and I was like, you go into, I was like, put yourself in a party before you go into the into these lobbies because they go crazy in there. It's like I, I, that's why I can't wait until discord is really integrated into like the playstation and Hell the xboxes yeah. so you could just play with your friends on the discord or your community and just chill out and just game out and teamwork and things of that nature yep yep i'm excited for that yeah yeah, yeah i'm really excited for that feature can't oh. wait but yeah i think we cover a lot of ground uh, on the game awards this year hopefully uh uh we'll you know it'll be good and we'll see what happens i just hope they showed some dope stuff and yeah and we'll be back for that um for, yeah, interested on the new shit because they're supposed to have like I think they're supposed to show like 400 or 300 games or some ridiculous amount yeah, of Yeah, so yeah, I'm like, I want to see I'm like, I'm hoping something something interesting I have a feeling that's like so many things are coming out next year, I have a feeling there's going to be some some big announcements and I'm, I'm hoping we get something crazy so we'll see what happens but uh, yeah, I'm running out of time before this thing cuts off so uh, yeah, any last words? Um, buenos nachos, and thank you once again for having us, Daniel. Absolutely. Second up to the boss. <laughs> right. Uh, all I got is uh, toodles. <laughs> all right, later. <laughs>